narrative that he's driven by a curse which forces him to kill his entire... <laughs> Okay now YouTube, so it's the last horror talk and I thought since we were so close to that day, let's talk the Halloween franchise. So starting off as a low budget indie movie in 1978, writer and director John Carpenter wanted to make a movie originally titled The Babysitter Murders along with his wife at the time, Deborah Hill. On a tight budget they were going to use a clown mask, but then the props designers came to John Carpenter with a Captain Kirk Don Post mask. He liked that, they thought, rip the sideburns off, cut the eye holes bigger, spray paint it white, they won't know it's John. It's meant to be James T. Kirk. John Carpenter then thought, the, whole, the film takes place on Halloween, yet no Halloween themed movie has given, like, put their name or whatever on the map. So that's when Halloween was born. It starred Donald Pleasance, a great British actor, along with newcomer actress and future scream queen, Jamie Lee Curtis, the daughter of Janet Lee, as everyone should know. Anyway, so the film was about that. A serial killer stalking the babysitters and killing them, with Laurie Strode being the final girl. This set the, the, the themes for the slasher genre, including... Six can kill you. A virgin can survive and outrun the killer. Don't do drugs or alcohol. And of course, with the success it had, John Carpenter decided to do another one. Only this time, be stay, remain as co-writer, but come back as producer. Giving the director's chair to another newcomer director. So anyway, after that, we then go into the third film. I mean, so... But before we get to the third film, sorry, we must go to the second film, taking place directly after the first film, Halloween 2, was titled, well, the tagline for Halloween was, Rip was, what was the night he came home, after 15 years of being locked in a mental asylum, Smith's Grove, and then escaped. Halloween 2 follows directly from that, Carrying on, of course, Michael's still out at large and out on the prowl, and he's out to get you. So anyway, with the film being a success, John Carpenter didn't want to do any more Halloween movies, so he thought, let's just end it and not leave it open for any sequels. And that's how Halloween 2 ended, where Dr. Sam Loomis and, uh, you know, blew himself up, in a chamber, in a room of gas tanks, and then ending it there. And then that was it for, well, 10 years in the franchise, but for us, about seven years. Next in the franchise, we go to the third movie Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Written and directed by Tommy Lee Wallace and produced by John Carpenter as he had that much involvement in the third film. Now the third film, of course, like I've just said, Season of the Witch, John Carpenter saw potential in the franchise to work as an anthology series, taking place in a different town, with the third we're going in a direction of witchcraft and sorcery, supernaturalness. The film even went as far as to abandon the whole slasher feel from which it first spawned. And they did have references to the first two Halloween movies, only on screen as Easter eggs. It also had a voice cameo from Jamie Lee Curtis as a town announcer in the film. Of course, Halloween 3, the idea of it just did not take off, even though it was a different film. Now you see, Halloween 3, in my personal opinion, is a good horror film in its own way. Usually people will go Halloween 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. But Halloween 3 is a good film in its own way. I don't think it should have been called Halloween 3. Season of the Witch would have been fine. 
But also, it was intended to be an anthology uh, film series, so there's another thing for you. And of course, we then go to the fourth film. With the anthology idea not taking off, we went back to the old setting. Sorry about that. As I was saying, it didn't take off as an anthology horror series, so they went back to the original format, which was bring Michael Myers back. Taking place ten years after the first two, Michael Myers had not died, but had been in a coma for ten years. The film also featured the return of original cast member Donald Pleasance, reprising his role as Dr. Sam Loomis. This time, Laurie, in between the events of Halloween 2 and 4, she died in a car crash, leaving a niece for Michael, her daughter Jamie Lloyd, becoming Michael's next target. Of course, with that film, it did alright, but Halloween 5 soon went into production without a solid script, but they still did it. They made Halloween 4 and 5, which are pretty much connected and sort of the same story, only one year apart from one another. Anyway, this was the last involvement John Carpenter had any involvement with. Sorry, voice straining there. So, after that, Halloween, with the cliffhanger it left, of a mysterious man in a suit gunning everyone down and Michael being gone. It was about six years before we found out what happened next. By then, the rights had been sold by you had been sold by Universal and bought by Dimension Films. This time, exploring Michael's motive that he's driven by a curse which forces him to kill his entire bloodline. This starred. Paul Rudd in his first lead role, and also one final performance from Donald Pleasance. Also, Halloween 5. Also, in Halloween 5, Jamie Lloyd, who was played by future Scream Queen at the time, Danielle Harris, would not make a return in this film as Jamie Lloyd. The role was given to someone else, but she had a child, and then he became Michael's next target. Of course, with Dr. Loomis's fate unknown at the end of the film and Michael getting away, we don't really know what happened because they didn't pick up on that. 20 years later, 1998. Now, they say Halloween H2O, 20 years later, is set in an alternate timeline where Jamie, I mean, where Michael, <laughs> Laurie didn't die. But of course, uh, but I like to think of it as Laurie faked her death and she didn't keep Jamie with her because she wanted her to stay safe. So she hid and had a new identity or whatever. That's how I want to think of it. That's how I get my head around it. So anyway, we has the return of Jamie Lee Curtis reprising her role. And also in the second one, as I forgot to mention, we discovered that Michael's parents died in a car crash. And that he had a baby sister that was Laurie. Laurie was originally born Cynthia Myers and was adopted by the Strode. So, as the film goes on, we discover more um, into Michael as he goes on a rampage. Of course, with the film not doing so good in the cinemas, you know, they even had added actors such as a young Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Josh Hartnett and rapper L.O. Cool Coolje to raise public interest, but it just didn't. And... With the film ending, they wanted to make sure they didn't make any more, so... <coughs> she killed Michael by beheading him. That's how it ended, and that's how we all thought the franchise would end in 1998 after 20 years. And of course, thinking it was all over, we were then given a sequel to H2O, Halloween Resurrection. This time being seen as a comedic and comedy kind of slasher. It had Buster Rhymes and, T and Diva Tara Reid along with another, along, along in the cast, sorry, with Jamie Lee Curtis having a small part in it this time, only being in the opening scenes. With Michael finally completing what he wanted to do, he then went home and who knows what he did next. All we know is that this time 
there were new teens and there were new problems. This time turning Michael's home into a hidden reality show. Where Michael, well, they all thought it was fake, but it wasn't, and Michael was on the prowl. Of course, wondering how did Michael survive after being beheaded, turns out it wasn't him, it was some pa some copper. As for Michael, he disappeared into the woods, which I kind of think, how did he get through all the police? Yeah, in a uniform, but wouldn't he have been all burnt up from Halloween too? Anyway, this one was the last film in the original franchise before we got a reboot from Rob Zombie in 2007. In 2007, former lead singer of band White Zombie, Rob Zombie, at the time writer and director of House of a Thousand Corpses and its sequel Devil's Rejects, he rebooted Halloween for a whole new generation, also having John Carpenter's approval. Zombie chose to explore Michael's backstory by being a two hour film, one hour of it as a prequel, the second hour as a redo of the original. They also starred uh, his wife, Sherry Moon Zombie, Tyler Mean as the big Michael Myers, Malcolm McDowell as Dr. Loomis, and also it featured D uh, Daniel Harris as Laurie's friend Annie. With this being a reboot, it wasn't a bad one if I'm being honest. It was an okay reboot, it wasn't the best, it wasn't the worst remake, but hey, I found it watchable. I liked how it was all a bit of a prequel. But I didn't like how it sort of ruined the mystery of the character and stuff. But, you know, it was okay, I guess. Um, but anyway, Halloween, it was somewhat of a success. And two years later, it spawned a sequel, Halloween 2. Of course, with this one not really being successful as the first attempt Rob Zombie made, the film just tanked. It, for me... I didn't really get it. I didn't get why Michael kept dreaming of a horse seeing his mother. If you ask me, it's Rob Zombie giving his wife an excuse to be in it again. As Michael's mother, Debbie Myers, only he sees her in her head. Thirsty. So anyway, Halloween 2 failed completely miserably and... Rob Zombie has seen no sign of trying to revive it. Of course, he never did like remakes. He never saw the point in them. He thought, why we do a good story, you know, if it's good. But, yet, yeah, he redid Halloween. Anyway, that was the last of the reboots. And for a while now, Halloween has been in the talks for another reboot. Said to be a sequel to the original franchise, Halloween Returns. We don't know much about it yet apart from it's out next year in 2017. What will it bring? I don't know. Will it be good? I don't know. I have no idea what's to come for the franchise's future. All I know is that Halloween Returns is in the works and we will find it all out next year. This has been Horror Talk. I've been your host Random Horror and yeah... That's pretty much it. Also, Random Horror will be returning in December as its own channel, but will not be uploading any proper official videos until January 1st, when Dr. Fripp returns with Halloween in January 2. But, yes, that's what will happen. Anyway, all that, I bid you all a goodbye, friends, goodbye, and don't have nightmares. And a happy Halloween to you all. Hello and thanks for watching. You can also, if you've missed any of the previous episodes of Horror Talk, you can see them right now. Either linked round here if I've managed to do it right or if not it's all linked in the description below so yeah see ya